Welcome to the Middle Room Workshop. Today I'm going to show you how you can cut and engrave projects that are larger than the engraving area of your machine. Without further ado, let's get into it. I have already shown you a similar video in the past. However, in that video, I was showing you how you could take advantage of the portability of your machine in order to break down large sheet of uh, play wood or MDF, basically the material that you are using for your projects. And that basically follows my uh, typical workflow. When I'm buying new sheets of material, I'm putting it down to the floor, I'm uh, placing the machine on top, I'm having a fixed uh, boundary line, and I'm basically uh, bit by bit cutting the piece so that I can then use uh, later on in my uh, engraving machine. Now in this particular video I'm going to show you how you can actually and practically cut and engrave projects that are larger than uh, the engraving area offered by uh, your machine. Now before getting there however I just want to make a small difference in what we mean uh, as big. Now obviously an object can be big as much as you want but uh, the way we will handle it, it depends on uh, whether uh, the project is bigger only in one direction. That means that uh, in one direction will fit nicely into your machine while the other dimension will be longer or if it's going to be bigger in both dimensions. That means uh, that it's generally bigger than your machine for both axes. And so you will need to work this out um, in a little bit different way. Now, I'm not going to demonstrate to you how you can work out projects that are bigger in both dimensions, and that's because I don't have the space uh, here to do that. But what I'm about to show you for uh, one dimension only will basically apply to the second dimension. You will only need to uh, have extra steps in order to uh, take care of that. Now, how do we go about it? In order to uh, cut or engrave projects that are longer for one of the axes, you will need to construct some temporary or fixed permanent uh, guiding system, physical guiding system that you can use in order to place your object or uh, sheet of material against it. And then you can slide it along um, while you are basically uh, cutting section of your project. And so with this, I think you already figure out what is the uh, process here. Uh, you will basically need to take your file, you will need to break it down in as many sections as you need in order to fit it nicely uh, into your board. And then each time you will basically need to uh, start with a new file or simply shift the file if you're using light barn, for example. And at the same time, you, you will need to physically shift the board of the of material or the object along the axis using the guide as a reference. Now, for the two-dimensional case, you will need to do the exact same thing. Uh, the only uh, difference there is that you will need to construct a two-dimensional system. So you will have two axes, and then you will need to have an additional axis that you will need to move along in order to uh, be able to slide the machine uh, in a region where it's not touching the hedge. So for example, uh, in the middle of the workpiece or uh, in direction which are away from the perimeter of the, of the workpiece. Now, for the guiding system, you can basically use whatever you find fancy as long as it's uh, straight and flat. And so as you can see in my particular uh, case, I've used uh, uh, timber of uh, wood. It's a 20, 30 millimeters timber of wood. I placed it against the uh, the two uh, acrylic support in the Nature Master 2S Plus and then I screw it down in the board but you can also do this without having to screw anything to the board as you can see I've done the same in my Alfero Laser 2 there the base is uh, much cleaner and so it was much easier for me to work that out and so once you've done that uh, then all you need to do is to basically place the workpiece in a known position um, to set the same within your software environment. Now, if you're using Lightbarn, that would be pretty simple because in Lightbarn, you can basically uh, load all of the section of your 
project and then you can basically displace or shift uh, the section along the specific axis and to basically place uh, only the section that you need to engrave uh, in turn into the on layer and everything else off or uh, alternatively you could uh, basically engrave only what is selected uh, if you're using laser grbl however here the workaround will be a little bit uh, more difficult because you will basically need to break down uh, the piece the project in inkscape for example uh, then you have to import this in uh, laser grbl and in laser grbl uh, you will need to pay attention on how you uh, position your reference point also the other thing to take into account is whether your machine has a home or not if your machine has a home things are much simpler because uh, you can anytime even if you accidentally uh, move the axis anytime you can basically uh, go back to home and restart from where it has to be however if you're using a machine without the home like for example the Ofero laser 2 then you will uh, need to be careful not to move the axis manually while you are uh, doing your job and so in that specific case what I suggest you to do is to use um, user uh, set origin and when you finish the project to basically move to that origin so that it's out of the way and you can basically put your hand there and to slide the piece accordingly and then to restart from there the machine is very precise so there won't be uh, any difficulty and so let me now show you what exactly I've created in this way so this is a name and uh, it's been requested to me by a friend uh, this is basically used for an event all right so as you can see I have this name um, the request is to cut it out of a uh, 3 millimeter uh, plywood sheet and so obviously this is bigger than the engraving area offered by my machine for this particular project I'm going to use my Ninja Master 2S Plus now the first thing that I want to do is whether one of the direction will fit in size so as you can see in this direction will fit but I can see that the overall dimension here is 200 millimeter the overall height and so what I can do that I know that my engraving area has a width of 255 millimeters so I will simply rotate this by 90 degrees and I will place it inside roughly then the other thing that I want to make sure is to be in absolute coordinate system since this specific machine has a home so that means it has uh, these limiting switches which represent the zero zero of the machine and the other thing that I want to do is to place uh, in the correct way the reference point with the geometry that I'm working on so as you can see right now I'm using uh, the top left corner now you can choose whatever you want as long as you are consistent and uh, you then uh, can follow up with the uh, several sections that you're going to uh, cut or engrave and so now what I want to do I want to place this to a specific known distance and so what I want to do here is as a X I will keep um, 30 millimeters since I have my uh, wooden board here wooden timber which is approximately 30 millimeters and then I want to uh, place this at 400 millimeters now the origin are over here and since I'm using the top left corner as a reference point for my geometry so from here to here is going to be basically 400 millimeter then what I want to do um, I just want to stay away from the edges so I'm always trying to keep a gutter or padding of something like 10 to 20 millimeters and so now what I want to do I want to basically uh, split this shape so what I can do that I can take advantage of one of the tools built in light barn so first I'll draw uh, a rectangle uh, there is no matter for the dimension here and then I will place it at say Y position uh, 20 millimeters okay so once I do that I now can select the geometry uh, ensure yourself to be in ungrouped mode so that this has to be a 
single geometry they can also be multiple but they all need to be individual not grouped and so first I'm selecting my uh, project my geometry then I'm selecting my cutting tool which is this rectangle here and you can go over to tools and cut shapes and so as you can see now here I have the two shapes now since I am in line mode into the layer uh, this is not going to create this extra line here however if you were into fill mode this would have create uh, lines here so that's something that you want to keep in mind now once I do that I I could simply uh, check this toggle this uh, option here to cut the selected graphics and so I could then select this and click on start in order to engrave section by section but I don't like to do that um, so I just want to be sure that everything is fine so I just want to move this into my blue layer and then I want to go and toggle that layer off so I'm sure that this layer is not going to come out from the uh, engraver and so once I'm ready with that I can then uh, basically go ahead and frame it out so that I can align my uh, work piece there so I can click on that right now so once I'm happy with my alignment then I can simply click on start now once I'm done with the first section, I'll need to carry on uh, with the following section. Now, for the first section, you had the material placed at some point into the uh, working area, and you had to have, uh, you can take a reference point on where the sheet of material is placed, or you will simply measure that afterward. It's up to you how you want to proceed in that. And so once I'm ready with that, now I can basically select the entire geometry and now uh, it's here you have to decide depending on how many section you have and what's the length of the entire project how far to move how far to displace in order to uh, restart with the following section with the next section and so in my particular case I'm going to move uh, 250 millimeters up so I will basically move my Y position to 650 which is 400 plus 250 and so as you can see now my blue layer is perfectly inside now my both layers are settled at the same exact power and speed and so I will turn this on and I will uh, toggle that off now uh, the workpiece will need to be shifted by exactly 250 millimeters and so this will ensure that you are in line however you will need to take precaution here to be uh, perfectly aligned so the first thing uh, with the uh, additional section you will need to frame it once again so you will cl click on frame and you will see whether or not uh, the framing falls where you want the line to connect um, if the engraver is too quick into the framing go into the move pane uh, and slow down for example 2000 let's say now this is the speed that is going to be used for uh, jogging and for uh, framing and so now I can click on frame again and now the module the, the, the machine will move very slowly so it will give me more time to check to verify that everything is aligned correctly Now, an extra step that you can take in order to ensure uh, that uh, your project, your following section is perfectly aligned with the previous one, is to use the jogging tool. And so, uh, for this, you will need to decide a couple of reference points within your project. Now, in my particular case, I only have two points, so there is not much to choose here. And so, you can get the uh, jogging tool here, and you can zoom in and then to click right at the spot there now although light barn is not uh, visually showing you anything light barn will know that you want to snap to this point of intersection there i mean where uh, the line hands and so then you can go and check you can uh, give a close-up with your eyes 
and to check whether the laser is in the exact spot. And so then you can do the same thing on the other side, over here, click and wait for it. And so once you are sure about that, then you can once again click on play. All right, as you can see, uh, the process is fairly simple. It's only a matter of taking care about uh, measurement and arranging the file within the software environment. As always, measure twice and cut once. So if you're not sure about something before, click on start. As a follow-up, just try again, try to frame it again in order to, uh, to check whether the alignment is correct. Apart from that, if you need to uh, do projects that are bigger in both directions, as I said, the same principle will apply. You will simply need to construct an additional axis so that you have an additional uh, reference point. However, here you will need to have also a movable axis that you can use in order to engrave or cut parts that are away from the perimeter of the sheet of material that you put into the uh, uh, engraving area. And that's pretty much all. I hope you found my video helpful. If you liked it, click the thumb button below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this one. Ciao for now!